Isn't it about time these assholes merge these two logos into one and spare us the 45 seconds it takes to suck their own c**k? Enjoy cupcake! Kelp cake. Fish hugging. Jesus, another fish has gone missing? This makes me feel like the NSA dude at the end of Hunt for Red October. You've lost another submarine. Hi, I'm Dory. Can you please help me? Finding Nemo opened with a gut-punching emotional scene of loss of life, setting the urgency tone early. This movie opens with a scene of a forgetful child, then cuts straight to her being alone. The movie could have done itself tons of favors by showing us the actual moment Dory lost track of her family, but instead we just glossed that shit over. She could come from anywhere. I wow. You are. You are no help today. I'm... Movie gets terrific comic actors Bill Hader and Kate McKinnon to voice fish, but then gives them nothing else to do in the whole movie, which is a waste. This sin is for the fact that her blindly trusting ass hasn't been gobbled whole by a bigger fish yet. The idea that fish come up to the surface to stare at the stars? That's actually laughably stupid, but whatever. Good Milky Way shot, Pixar. You're perfect! Hi! I'm Dory! Was it something I said? No, it was you popping out of nowhere suddenly, thereby scaring them. Are you stupid in addition to having memory issues? Oh my god! Finding Nemo Origins. A whole year? Making it a whole year is gonna make it very hard for me to swallow that Dory will be successful in finding her parents. Also, you're telling me that after the original Finding Nemo adventures, she's managed to stick around, but then a whole year after that, she's gonna wander off? F***ing seriously? I thought there were three sharks. No, no, there were definitely four. But last time you told it, there were three. Movie decides Marlin is a compulsive liar, which was not a trait he displayed prior to this movie, but whatever. Sequels gotta find humor where they can. You almost missed the field trip! Even though Dory got you up early. Where are we going? I thought you told her. I did tell her. Yeah, Marlin, but why did you bring her here if you told her she couldn't go on the field trip anyway? And hasn't Nemo been through enough shit that he could have made this trip on his own? I mean, it's one f***ing year later. Exactly. Wow, well, I am so honored. I have never been a teaching assistant before. Mr. Ray, you got help. Marlin, who has absolutely nothing to do, gives up on trying to tell Dory she can't go on this field trip after one misunderstanding. But I guess he's busy and all, what with all the many anemone amenities back at home. You see, kids, when two fish love each other. And we'll stop right there. Apparently Dory, who was never taught about reproduction, knows about reproduction. And also, the act of egg fertilization is given the same Puritan embarrassment as human reproduction, even though these kids are a year older and should already know this I remembered something! Luckily, this class Mr. Ray taught today contained exactly the sort of clues Dory needed to kickstart her journey. And she doesn't forget them within seconds, making her memory in this movie super convenient. Something important? What? How the f*** is Marlin here right now? Did he get a premonition about checking on Mr. Ray's field trip and somehow find all these assholes who then somehow found Dory even though she was carried into the undertow in a mass of stingrays? Somewhere out there is my family. It's a massively ginormous ocean, though. Do you really think you can strike finding a missing fish gold twice? Also, it takes nearly one third of this Finding Dory movie for Dory to even go looking for herself. You can get us all the way across the ocean, right? No, but I know a guy. Good thing it's been a whole year and these turtles are migrating again, huh? Also, as happy as I am to see Dude Crush again, he rides the East Australian Current and shouldn't have any f***ing knowledge or ability to get these fish to California. Sea turtles are not an entire globe inhabiting species. Sequel to Finding Nemo perpetuates the myth of clownfish being able to hold on to turtle shells during this speedy tubular journey. We call that feeding the fishes! Recommend us! Squirt hasn't aged a day in the last year. I'm concerned about his growth and lack of nutrition. Dory somehow doesn't see or doesn't react to this scary giant ass eyeball that appears right in her field of view while Marlin is talking. Once again, Predator decides to announce itself instead of just killing these fish right now. Have you ever seen that show Animal Ninja Warriors? Yeah, those f***ers don't announce their presence. They just suddenly snap and they're dead. 20,000 leagues under the entertainment value. Also, fortunately for the scene setting, an entire cargo ship and all its containers sunk here. And all those containers have stayed stacked on the ship despite the 45 degree angle. Nemo! This is why you don't bring your child on intercontinental ocean adventures. <laughs> Physics, ex machina. You can go wait over there. Go wait over there and forget. It's what you do best. This is super mean for a fish that's lived near her and called her friend, and tolerated her forgetfulness for an entire year. And now, of course, she's going to get just far enough to get separated from them to cause further calamity. All because Marlin was an uncharacteristic dick. I'm Sigourney Weaver. Why is audio intended for human guests of the park so audible from outside and underwater? Other than to advance the plot. I mean, sh do they actually have speakers underwater so all the fish can hear this too? Where we believe in rescue, rehabilitation, and release. Except all the fish who can help Dory find her parents. They aren't released yet. That would be silly. F***ing why would a Marine Life Institute in California have a picture on the wall of the Australian dentist's niece from the first movie? And how f***ing old is that Apple IIe computer back there? Octopi can camouflage, but that's very different from complete invisibility. There wasn't even a telltale lump here, meaning this octopus can also camouflage his 3D body into something 2D. If I just take your tag, I can take your place on the transport truck. How the hell does he think he's getting this tag off? 
This is one of those super impossible cable ties. Now, maybe it's because he's an octopus. He doesn't know that. But he does know something about Cleveland and understands human speech. So you can forgive us for being assholes about that. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It's kind of a drag. She has to keep saying this over and over because it makes the movie kind of boring. We're supposed to be releasing the octopus back to the ocean today. Amazing, this octopus was planning his prison break on the very day Dory got captured and these two could start some sort of symbiotic relationship. How does Hank look green when his camouflage takes the color of his surroundings? There's no green here except for on the map and it's not in range. By the way, nice job making the octopus basically Randall from Monsters, Inc. Hey, look, shells. <gasps> <laughs> Jesus, this movie is like Memento Cross with Slumdog Millionaire. Dory's memory is inconvenient until the world, which is conducting some sort of parental scavenger hunt, provides perfect clues at the perfect time. Base, this is Carol. Uh, I think I might have found that missing octopus. Over. What a liar. When did you ever see the octopus during this walk down the stairs? Yeah, you might have stepped on octopus goop, but you didn't get visual confirmation, so stop lying, you lying liar. Hmm. Destiny. <gasps> Destiny? Destiny is not only the name of a whale Dory knows, but the mantra by which the screenplay was written. Dory knocks over the coffee pot without breaking it or making a noise, and absolutely nobody will wonder why a f***ing coffee pot is suddenly here. <laughs> this employee can't hear Hank's grunts and loud-ass monkey barring. Also, this octopus is so James Bond, I'm wondering how he hasn't broken out of this place on his own yet, or found and put himself in whatever tank he's trying to get to. And then this person absentmindedly throws a regal blue tang out into the whale shark tank. I mean, people look at things, right? You and I were friends! No. We talked through the pipes when we were little! We were pipe pals! Because aquarium rehab places like this always have pipes connecting each exhibit for easy marine life communication, of course. Also, no, you weren't pipe pals. You f***ing weren't. F*** you, you were not. Dory's little voice couldn't carry that far, or even help Horton hear a hoot, much less be pipe pals with a f***ing whale shark. An ocean exhibit. Hmm, a fish with a memory problem, a shark with an eyesight problem, Nemo's weak fin. It's almost as if these movies think disabilities are easy joke fodder. I'm sorry, but there's no other way. There's no other way. <gasps> there's no other way. Now this movie is getting f***ing ridiculous. Like, Dory spent a whole year not hearing anything that reminded her of her parents. Now she's hit a virtual treasure trove of memory joggers in one day. And maybe the movie is saying her memory is simply just getting better, but it's still a ridiculous amount of reminders in a short amount of time. <laughs> What are you even doing? We're calling her over, of course. In the animal kingdom, the pronoun game is a huge problem. Even worse than poaching or overfishing. Becky keeps humorously pecking Marlet, but isn't this beak a beak? Like, tear fish and other small prey apart kind of beak? All you have to do is imprint with her, mate. Oh man, they dragged Twilight Breaking Dawn 2 into this, didn't they? How exactly is Becky supposed to carry us? Gerald! Man, how many lost fish have broken their way into quarantine using Becky in a sand pail? These sea lions make it sound like all the time. Hey, movie, how did these two get out of the tank and across the massive human walkway to hide in the stroller? I know you glossed over it, but I cannot. Still not clear. These assholes watching two amazingly large sea creatures are not in any way dumbfounded at this kind of behavior right now. Just the beluga's posture alone, with its fin in the air, would make me want to call the park authorities. Mad on the loose baby stroller, driving through families and other moms, but nobody gives a Wait, The world's most powerful pair of... I know that. Why do I know that? No idea, since you were just a little baby when you left, and I can't think of one reason why you'd ever see that sign while in captivity. This feels sort of like the traffic cone thing in Toy Story 2, where miraculously no one is observant, and no one even as much as walks by this tree with a pail of fish in it. Tree Lim has unreal catapulting powers and insane accuracy by throwing Marlin and Nemo into a fish tank that would definitely be sitting around outside a gift shop, but thank goodness they landed in water, am I right? What are the odds of that, by the way? I believe my disbelief has served its proper suspension when it comes to this octopus-driven stroller that no one in this entire building notices and is now on full alert bullshit status. Wow! Lucky alcove of luckiness. That's it! You have wasted my time! Wait, no! That transport truck leaves at dawn and I'm not missing it, so Wait. give me your tag! I honestly can't argue with a single thing this guy says here. Why would a spiky fish like this be put in the children's touch pool? Do you want to get sued? Because this is how you get sued. She remembers the Just Keep Swimming song from her childhood and decides that is advice for her current situation. And despite all logic, it apparently is. You made her feel like she couldn't do it. Didn't we cover this shit in the first movie? Are we really covering it again? Seriously? She would just look at the first thing she sees and... <gasps> it's at this point, Jeremy lost his ability to sigh. This is a sigh moment. But the movie thoroughly extinguished all of them in the first 30 minutes, so I've been forced to do it. Sigh. Nemo, hold on to me! <gasps> Ah! Fishix. The tag. Right. This tag comes off way too easily, considering what we know about it, which is way too much. My parents are actually down there. Probably not, actually, but whatever. There we go. Now, if you ever get lost, Dory... Despite Dory's parents not being in this tank for quite some time, the shells they laid out still managed to keep their trail over a whole year. Is that why you're not in quarantine? Quarantine? Yeah! 
Yeah, that's where they took all the blue tanks. The ex machinas in this movie could fill a whole series of Harry Potter novels. <laughs> Dory? Hello? <gasps> Bull pipe pal thing saves the day with a lucky whale who uses echolocation in the other tank. I mean, I'd settle for a convenient trail of Reese's Pieces at this point. Also, thankfully for Dory in this movie, this beluga figures out his echolocation abilities at just the right time. Oh, thank God, it's Marlin and Nemo. But why the f*** did dude's echolocation show a much larger fish this whole time? Was it for suspense purposes? I bet it was. You've shown me how to do stuff I never dreamed of doing. Outsmarting sharks and jumping jellyfish. Yeah, those would be called lucky. Not some sort of amazing intellectual survival skills. You made all that happen. Did she? I think the sea turtles, the pelican, and the dentist tankfish deserve a lot more credit than you're giving them here. I mean, did you even see the last movie? Yes, this is it. And just in time to be guarded away, too. You were about five seconds away from being on the floor in debt, but luck is so much on your side, you should buy a fish lottery ticket right now. My family! And it's miraculously lit, unlike all the other loser tanks in here. Who do you think made sure all these open-topped fish tanks were in the right order for this progression of jumps? The screenwriter or God? I want to know what kind of Marine Life Institute leaves a f***ing vat of mob water lying around during working hours when the janitors aren't even here yet. Also, let's not forget all the nastiness that is in this mop water that would likely kill fish and is dumped into another fish tank later. Dilution can only do so much, people. Dory, that was years ago. They never came back. How long have these blue tangs been in the MLI to know the Dory story? And just now the Institute decides, ah, eh, we'll take them to Cleveland. F*** them. Them? Uh, I can be more specific. My, my them! All movie long, Dory's been talking about her parents and calling them by name. But suddenly she forgets Marlin and Nemo and is f***ing clueless because the plot needs her to be. Dory gets out to the open sea and is so unsure of what to do that I'm positive she's about to accidentally herself into her parents. Dory was thrown out of the quarantine and down a sewer grate and funneled out into the sea where she couldn't remember anything except what would Dory do. Miraculously, this leads her to some kill, which leads her to a magic seashell, which leads her to her parents, who just happen to be here all these years. I'm all for Dory doing this without help, but this officially broke me watching this movie. It's way too lucky. Everything in this movie is way too lucky. With the numerous seashell trails, wouldn't she have seen one of these well before she actually did? There are so many trails here that finding any particular one should have been easier than the miracle it appeared to be a minute ago. Also, all shells lead to the drowned radial tire. Wait, what? Okay, the parents put this together and hung out here for years, just in case Dory somehow came here. This is like the parable of the talents, and these parents are the ones that buried their talent, which did not impress the master. It's a big f***ing ocean, y'all. Last movie, we saw what a real parent does when a child goes missing. He goes looking for them! When did Dory's dad's eyes turn hazel, or whatever the f*** this color is? Why do you think we stayed put here all these years? Instead of going to the MLI and finding a way back in the exhibit, which would have been way more logical considering the problem-solving skills of fish in these movies, but f*** it. Marlin and Nemo! Oh yeah, the problem that makes this movie feel longer than it is. See, when they found me, it felt like fate. Do you know what I mean? Or, I don't, what's another word for fate? Like, destiny. Oh, uh, we all knew what you meant by fate, but somehow that triggers your thesaurus and bails you out of yet another jam. It's your destiny, destiny. <laughs> Writes itself. Oh yes, my beautiful gift! Would this whale's echolocation work this well above water? Oh, so get used to it, Gerald! Shaky Joe. Why are these California sea lions British? Oh man, if only there was a way to stop traffic! This is something that I highly doubt a beluga whale, a whale shark, and a blue tang will be able to figure out, considering this is human stuff they've never encountered. But Dory gets the bright idea to use these ex machinators to stop traffic. Whoa, whoa, Dory, honey, you're not leaving us again. You're this is actually exactly like Marlin doubting Nemo at the climax of the first movie. This shit is so paint by numbers, even Bob Ross looks down on it. From heaven. These otters willingly stand in traffic to stop it for a fish they'd never met. Yeah, those things just appeared out of nowhere, well within your sight, one minute ago. Also, these otters are fucking dead. These cars are going too damn fast to prevent roadkill right now. Apparently, the otters also knew they needed to hug in the street, or else their natural cuteness would not have been enough. None of this glass breaks after this rough stop by the truck. Becky! Becky, come back! We need your help! Becky! I'll forgive the cartoon speed at which this bird showed up, but I will not forgive the fact that this bird heard Marlin's call in the first place. Dory, follow me! But of course she doesn't follow, because this movie is an aggressive dickhead to stuff like ending. Okay, kid. I guess this is goodbye. No! What do you mean, no? The assholes who shooed away the otters a minute ago decided, eh, f*** it. There's a multi-million dollar animated aquatic adventure going on, so we'll leave the doors open for a record amount of time to allow all that to happen. What is so great about plans? I never had a plan. Thing that Andrew Stanton told the writers when this movie began production somehow finds its way into the script. Also, do they have time for this? 
When does time get invented in this world? The best things happen by chance because that's life. Is this movie's message seriously that we shouldn't plan for stuff and just take life as it comes? While I recognize the problems with over planning, this is a terrible, terrible message to send to kids. I see this movie's A113 gag is here, so a few dozen animators across the country can jerk off now. I can't see squat! Which way are we going? This joyride doesn't end with 20 people and numerous species of fish dead. All these fish switch tanks, which is definitely hilarious, but none of them fall or break. This truck jumps two concrete highway barriers and keeps going. That's bull****. Then the goddamn fish tanks inside again go unscathed. It's like this movie was made just to test my patience, and the movie has won. Seagulls! Hank, follow those birds! The ocean's left! Seagulls often fly in from the ocean, at least as often as they fly out to the ocean. But hey, you had a 50-50 chance and you needed a lucky break. The cop response to a stolen truck is mesmerizingly fast, and despite the fact that they had no idea where this truck was going, they managed to set up a roadblock in this direction. Sweet! I enjoy this What a Wonderful World slow motion shot as much as the next guy, but these doors were locked from the outside, Damn it! They do not fall open during a free fall. All these fish miraculously miss the rock on which these sea lions are perched. You can do what Ever you put your mind to another terrible message to send to kids because that is patently untrue what if my kid sees this movie and then puts his mind to jumping off a building to fly huh huh it really is quite a view of what blurry water as far as the eye can see you fish need to get out more okay props and respect to this movie for giving us fun visuals underneath much of the end credits something not enough movies do one sin removed how are these assholes not dead Fish gets lost and needs rescuing by other fish. Teacher Manta Ray sings the same melody. Epilogic, mesopelagic, bathyobisopelagic, migration, migration, let's learn about migration. A comedic side character uses a single word in repetition to create the sound we humans think of as their standard call. <laughs> Sudden frantic attack from a predator. During said attack, Dory has a stretchy item on her head. Crucial directions provided by Crush. Captive main character's helper fish has a disability. Rescue fish carried in water and flown by bird to save the day. Pixar shames humanity with casual ocean garbage. Crush says righteous. Righteous! 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 Crucial well assistance. Plot turning reliance on strangers. Initially, the disabled helper creature has selfish motives. We're all gonna escape. You have wasted my time. Wait, no. That transport truck leaves at dawn. And Human kids are terrible to fish. An octopus is made to ink when he's not ready. Therapy fish. It's, it has been three weeks since my last fish. On my honor. I feel fantastic. <laughs> Main character finds self in open ocean near climax and total despair. Main character's helper fish break out of their confinement. Heroes have to follow a white human vehicle. Multiple good fish chant something over and over. Processed fish sticks. I remembered something. Look, memory can change the shape of a room, it can change the color of a car. And memories can be distorted. They're just an interpretation, they're not a record. I don't want to forget this. Somewhere out there is my family. Dory do? What would Dory do? What would Brian Boitano do if he was here right now? He'd make a plan and he'd follow through. That's what Brian Boitano Follow the shells. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Hey, where's Dory? Is she with you? They look like big, good, strong hands, don't they? I'm your density. <laughs> <laughs>